everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Makeup Diaries with Mariah. I'm Mariah, and I'm so excited to be here. I'm very nervous to be putting my bare face on the internet, but I've wanted to start vlogging for so, so long. I just don't know what took me so long, but now that I've started this brand, Textured Air, I'm very excited to be doing this as a part of it. You know, I don't know why it took me so long to start vlogging because there are very few things in this life that I love more than the sound of my own voice. In fact, I think, I think the problem with society is that no one is as smart as me, or at least no one that I've ever met is as smart as me. I've never met Beyonce, so. I'm really just excited to start doing this, and today I really just wanna talk about like what this is about, and about my brand, Textured Air, and about the website, and the community that we're trying to cultivate, because really, that's why I'm doing this, as a part of that community. I want to start by saying, that in no way am I any kind of like makeup artist or beauty guru. I am ve I have even like not very good skin, but I do love doing my makeup. I really do. I'm very just okay at it, but still be getting shows in the club. Okay, like no, I like I'm. I've never had a complaint about it in the club. So um, even though that's a different type of lighting, but still. So I, I really just like wanted to start doing this because usually when I'm a home alone getting ready to go somewhere and I'm doing my makeup, um, I'm by myself and I like being alone a lot. So when you're alone a lot, you kind of start talking to yourself a lot. And I realize that, you know, that's really what I, I really like doing my makeup and talking to myself, downloading about my day, downloading about what's going on in the world and things like that. So I thought, why not start sharing it with people? Because I think that I should share my voice with people. So really, I'm not gonna like do, you know, what other people do and talk about products. Although I'll totally put the products in the description box below so that everyone can see like, what am I using? But I'm just at home alone. I'm getting ready to go out. I'm wearing my little, my, my Bobby Jack um, robe that my mom got me when I went away to college like years ago. Um, and also I'm wearing my, my, like I wore it to sleep. It's my alma mater, Temple University in Philly. Go Owls. <laughs> um, I'm wearing my, um, my shirt that I, like I got probably like freshman year for free when they were giving out, you know, just all types of shit for free. But I got it for free. And so I'm just here and I really today just want to talk about textured air and what it's about and what we are about. So I'm just going to get started. I'm just going to start doing my makeup and talking like I would talk to myself, like as if I was preparing to go somewhere. So I have this idea like for a very long time because I wanted to start like this online community for black women really because in my life and in my work there's nothing more important to me than making sure that black women feel seen feel represented accurately and i don't mean just like the tokenism that we get in a lot of you know movies and tv i don't mean like horrible wigs and aids of tyler perry movies i mean like for real seeing ourselves, seeing our flaws, seeing that we don't have to be, you know, perfect and things like that. And seeing like that, that our journey as women, as black women, especially in a world that is so much against us, is about growth, is about discovery constantly. And I feel like growing up, I didn't, I didn't ever feel, you know, that, I just didn't feel that energy in any of the media that I consumed, in any of anything that was really out there that was geared toward black because there wasn't much that was for black women and so and then you know things did start to change a like very recently there all of these brands have come out of the woodwork and now all these big media companies are starting to you know give black women like you know, their own brands as a part of you know their larger brand and things like that but I don't think it's enough I really don't think it's enough. And so what I wanted to do was to start my own brand for black women, for young black women like myself. And I, I like our tagline is for the metamorphosis of black women because we want you to come here and be changed. We want you to want you to discover something new and black 
women in your life you know like I want you to buy black buy black women's work I want you to read black women's work I want you to see their designs I want us to stop getting clowned on Twitter for our innovation and things like that that people see as ghetto until it's marketed like by white you know mass media companies and then it becomes mainstream I want us to support each other in that way and grow together and be proud of who we are and where we come from and things like that so really, that was really my, when I had the idea to start it, that was where it came from. It's taken a long time, a long time for me personally, to even feel like confident enough to do that kind of thing because I still feel like as a person, there's so much growing that I have to do. Um, but I feel like, you know, if you wait until you're 100% ready to do something, the, the time is never going to come. But I felt so compelled to start this. And then, of course, and this is the importance of having, like, a network, having a great, like, group of, like, black girlfriends who will support you no matter what. Because they're all like, girl, we ain't got no money. You ain't got no money. We all just graduated. But we want to be in this together. We want to help you build this brand. We want to help you do this. And so I do have several wonderful black women who are also helping me you know build this brand and take and do this like you know website um and we've one of my friends one of my black friends is coding the website from scratch like she doesn't have a full-time job herself but she's coding the website for me another friend is like working on lots of beauty related things for me that isn't like what i'm doing but much much more serious another friend is working on lots of things for fashion i have a black friend doing marketing like we got to together and decided that we would like just combine all of our collective skills to create this place for black women who are our age you know who are in our like stage in life of discovering of just getting out of you know a routine like we all did and I probably should just tell you a little bit about myself so like I said my name is Mariah I'm from Chicago originally born and raised it's my favorite place in the world honestly, truly, except for probably Florence, Italy. Um, but no, I love Chicago so much. I love home. Um, I'm 23. I just graduated college, like not too long ago, actually. Now it's probably been like, what, six months since I graduated college. Um, so I just graduated college like six months ago. Um, and over the summer when I had moved home from college, it felt like it was the biggest transition of my life you know I felt like I thought that when I went into college like graduating high school that that was going to be the biggest transition that I'd ever gone through as a person because I was moving away from everything that I knew I moved all the way from Chicago to Philadelphia and the only time that I had ever been to Philadelphia was for my college orientation I had never seen it I didn't know a soul there like I knew no one and I moved because I thought, this is your chance, Mariah. It's your chance to carve out your own personality. You get to start over and be who you always wanted to be, you know? And also they had just given me the most money that any school had given me. So I was like, well, I'm gonna go here. It's not like I don't have student debt because I do, but um, a lot less than if I had gone to like uh, the new school in New York or to like, Emerson like I was gonna and who wants to live in racist ass Boston no one wants to live in Boston not even people from my well white people from Boston like Mark Wahlberg probably like living in Boston but I don't think any of the black people from Boston like living in Boston so I had to nix that and I moved to Philly and it ended up it started off very rough I really thought after like my first semester that I was gonna like um either you know and this is terrible I thought I was gonna either like move home and have a very contentious relationship with my mother as if it already wasn't because we'd be in such close proximity or I was gonna kill myself. I didn't know what to do. I felt, I felt so alone, you know? I felt so, like I had so many feelings and I didn't end up doing that. By the grace of God, there's something on my nose. I'm gonna, I don't know what the fuck that is. 
by the grace of God, I did not end up doing that. And I'm grateful every day. And I ended up making my own family out there. Those people taught me so much about myself. I feel like I became like a woman, you know, out there. Like I, I really, there was so much that I learned about myself, about life, you know, just being, coming from all different kinds of people who came from all different walks of life, who had had all different life experiences. I met this girl freshman year who actually ended up being one of my really closest friends. But at the time I was like, I'm not gonna like this. Cause she touched my hair. Don't do it. But she touched my hair and she was like, is this a weave? And it just like blew my mind because never in my life have I met someone who didn't know what weave was. But she was actually, she was from some small town right outside of Boston. So it actually, you see how it all just connects? I don't hate Boston. I really don't. I want to go there. My best friend went to school in Boston and she loved it, but it was racist still. Um... So I kind of carved out my own family out in Philly and it was, it was hard at first, but then it just became, they became so close to me that I couldn't imagine my life without them. And for a long time, because I majored in theater, I was an actor, which is crazy because I really don't even act that much anymore. But that's the thing about going to college is like, you really never know what will influence you in life. And I'm a Sagittarius. And so I'm, I have this wanderlust. It just doesn't matter to me how much experience I have, how much you know money I have or anything. I am never gonna spend a moment in my life just being unhappy because of, I'm afraid to chase a dream. So I changed my mind my junior year of college, like my the spring semester junior year of college. And I was like, I don't, want to just be an actor I don't want I don't even want to do theater anymore and all I'd ever done my entire life was theater I said I want to be a filmmaker and I was so afraid because I had never done that I had never gone down that path but I'm like oh I want to be a writer now I want to be a director I want to be like a creative you know and and do all those kinds of things that were completely out of my comfort zone completely out of my wheelhouse I didn't have the jargon I didn't have the experience or anything but I was like fuck it now or never so I decided that after senior year I was gonna instead of staying in Philly like a lot of my friends did or moving to New York which was like my dream since I was you know a young and watching Glee um in my basement because my family did not like that show um I decided I was gonna move to LA you know I said you'll never be this young again um who knows what is gonna wait, what's, what awaits you out there? But I, I am excited to find out. So um, after graduation, I moved home for a little bit because I had to save up some money. And I was very afraid. Like I, I was like, I feel like I've lost something. I've lost a part of myself now that I'm back at home, you know? It was scary to be back in that place and be in this contentious, you know, situation. Cause me and my mom have always like butted heads and I'm like, I'm right back here. I felt so depressed and I felt like there just wasn't anything out there for me that was reassuring to me. That was, you know, that was, that was a community that I felt like was safe, like that I could go on and discover things about myself. And I was just sitting in my shitty ass summer job just sitting there, you know, selling, renting volleyball equipment to people, uh, to white people on the beach in Chicago. And I was like, I want to do this myself. I don't have all of the tools. I don't have all of the answers. I don't even have that much experience, but I want to create this community. I want to create this community for black women, for black women like myself, who have gone through a major transition in life, who are discovering so much about themselves every single day. And who need other like-minded people. And so I said, I hit up a bunch of friends like, hey guys, this might sound super crazy, but here's another thing that I'm gonna be doing, that I'm gonna be spending. I'm gonna start building and creating this brand. And it really is just 
what I've always done. It really is what I've always just been about. And that is black women creating for black women, creating space for black women to tell their own stories, creating space for plus size black women like myself. I'll show you a picture. That is what I like. And so, it, and and the name came to me really out of nowhere because we were we were toying with a lot of names but I just kept coming back to what's important to me as a black woman what defines me as a black woman what what do I think everyone can relate to you know all, what is one thing that I feel like unifies black women and that is hair hair of all different types different textures different everything and so that's where it came from and so I was like textured hair I was like, but that sounds too much like we're selling weave and I don't really know how to do that. And then the air part came because for me, I feel like the women of my generation were like the next generation were the heirs to like everything that black women from, you know, the before us, everything that black women who came before us have done for us, the space that they've created for us to be able to create this kind of space for ourselves. It really is amazing. And so that's another part of it is I want to pay homage to all of the black women and who, who've done so much to make me even be confident enough in myself to do things, you know, to have the confidence of like, I used to say things like, you know, I have the confidence of like some mediocre middle aged like blue hair, blonde eyed white man. But really, I think I I just have the confidence of like Rihanna. I have the confidence of like a Beyonce. I have the confidence of a Michelle Obama. I have the confidence of a Tracy Ellis Ross. These are women who I can relate to. These are women who who I think have done much more for me and who have, who, you know, as much acclaim as they get, they get 10 times as much hate and they shouldn't. And so I want you know, to just be given black women their flowers while they're alive to receive them. And I want to also just, you know, educate younger black women than me because there is this whole generation that is younger than me. And I feel like they have so much more access to information than I ever had. And so it's crazy because there, there are all these narratives that are gonna be out there, they're gonna be presented to them about their existence by people who don't understand it. And so they wa I want them to get it from someone who couldn't get it from anyone who looked like me because that wasn't what was marketed. And so we're, we're doing a lot of writing at first, you know, we're gonna we're writing about all different kinds of things, about wellness, about beauty, about fashion, about, you know, our own lives, our own experiences, about black women traveling, about, you know, books, about movies, entertainment, paying homage to like all those black women that we love and we talk about so much. We're creating, you know, all kinds of like, you know, playlists and kinds of like things involving music and content involving music because we want to, you know, just, expose women to these new artists who are you know taking over like neo hip-hop soul who are taking over rap music like the way that and don't even give me like there is there are very few things in this life that i am more passionate about than rap music like and that we'll get to it later but like we will get to it later but what is important to me is is, is exposing you know people who i don't think are getting enough shine to it and to other people. And so um, I'm really excited to be doing that as well. I also, for my own selfish reasons, I just want to, I want this to be a place where black women meet and they share their experiences and experiences that I haven't had because I want my eyes also just to be opened up to like so many new things that I just have never had them opened up to. And so really this is like, for me, selfishly it's like it's like a homecoming you know or like like when you see all of your friends that you haven't seen in a long time when you meet and and that's what I want this to be I want this to be a place where black women can just come and you know learn about themselves and really start to question their existence because I think if we're not doing that and we get too comfortable with who we are and we settle into just one way of being that it really stunts our growth and I don't ever want to not be growing. Like I said, I'm a Sagittarius. I got to keep it moving. I always have to be on to the I don't ever want to not be growing. I don't ever want to not be discovering. I don't ever want to not be 
trying to become this person, you know, and, and it isn't to say that I, I don't think I'm, you know, great or I don't think I'm like, but I don't feel like my full potential that I've reached it yet. And so I really want to learn. I'm going to be quiet and do my brows. I'm not very good at doing my brows. So they're going to look like what they're going to look like, but I don't care. I don't care. So just some other content that we're planning. You know, we're planning like some video content, but that'll come a little bit later. But we also have, I also have a podcast and the podcast is called The Blacklist. And really it's another one of my passions because, you know, as an artist, I always love, and I am a like a film buff. Like I love movies so much. And I really, really, really love like old Hollywood classic black and white movies. Um, and even the ones in color from like the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. Um, and so a thing that I took on like a couple years ago, because like I was listening to my po my favorite podcast of all time. You must remember this. My favorite, okay, my favorite podcast of all time that isn't like The Read or My Favorite Murder um, is You Must Remember This. Um, and so I remember she was talking about in an episode, um, it was an episode about Lena Horne, you know, and if you don't know anything about Lena Horne and all of her, just everything that she's gone through in her life and every, like, just it's amazing and I would listen to that episode of you must remember this because it really opened my eyes to like wow how did, had I not even ever considered that black people who were making movies at the same time as like Marilyn Monroe or like John Wayne or all of these really famous like classic Hollywood actors how had I never considered that they would have just as interesting stories and so it started it just started me and I love researching so it started I just fell down this rabbit hole of discovering so much about the lives of all these black stars who really paved the way for, for, for black actors today, for black creators, for black directors of today to be doing what they do so well. It's really crazy to me how little I knew about this. And so that podcast, that podcast kind of just explores like the lives of like all these black Hollywood stars you know, who were very, very influential in Hollywood at the time, who were in all of these big movies, who started all these big, you know, movements, or movements as big as they could with their very limited resources and the very, very violent and overt racism that they faced, you know, but they, they still happened to make a name for themselves. They still, you know, as determined as ever, wrote their way into history, but you don't read about them, you know? And it's not that I don't, you know, care to read another, actually, no, it is. I don't really care to read another um book about, you know, the life of Marilyn Monroe and, you know, the life of Clark Gable and all that shit. Because we've heard those stories so many times. But the stories that we haven't heard are of the black stars who had pretty much everything against them. Had so much working against them. All of society working against them. And still somehow managed to make it all the way to Tinseltown. Who managed to make it all the way to like fame and fortune and money. And some of them at a very, very young age. Some of them were children. There were child stars and that is what the new season that's coming up is about. It's about, you know, the child stars of Hollywood, you know, because you read all the time and you see all the time if you've ever stayed up to like 3 a.m. watching infomercials about Shirley Temple, you know, but you haven't heard about like all of the people that I'm talking about this season on um, the podcast. But the first season really was about, you know, me and just talking about the black women stars, you know, of, of, of classic Hollywood that really inspired me as an artist, as an actress. And I really, so that was a, you know, that season kind of came out of like my own, you know, knowledge that I had going into doing the podcast. But, um, the second season happened kind of by like just what I discovered from like, just Googling and research and falling down that rabbit hole. And the second season talks about, you know, it really discusses um, the black independent film movement of like the 1920s, the 1910s and the 1920s. Um, and that one, you know, is much, it was 
all really new information to me about how, you know, the birth of a nation, that movie, that horribly racist movie, um, you know, that was called like the greatest cinematic venture. I'm, I'm really struggling with this, um, this cashew powder. It won't come fuck out of the thing. Um, yeah. So it was about the birth of a nation and, um, how that kind of sparked a movement in, um, you know, black filmmaking. And so that one, that season was a lot more like crazy for me because I discovered so much that I feel like doesn't get talked about. You know, I feel like this like renaissance of black filmmaking that's like happening right now in Hollywood isn't the first wave of it. And we know, we've read about Oscar Michaud and, and things like that, but he wasn't really the only one. And I don't think we talk enough about the rest of the black filmmakers who were right there alongside him, you know, doing this, you know? And so that really was what that season was about. I say you know a lot. I really don't like that about myself, but I do, whatever. Um, so yeah, I, that was really exciting. And then this new season also just kind of came really out of nowhere for me because I was just doing a lot of reading, just reading anything I could, articles, a lot of books about classic Hollywood and just seeing like what I could find out, you know? It, did anything, was anything gonna like inspire me? Was anything gonna like catch my eye so much that I had to go down like that rabbit hole of research? And that is when I discovered the story of like Sunshine Sammy, you know? A child star who really was like the biggest black star in Hollywood at the time. And it kind of led me down a rabbit hole of discovering just all these other stars who were, you know, all these other stars who were literally children who were making more money than all of the adults. And so that really is what the blacklist is about. I'm gonna, you know, start being a lot more consistent with, you know, doing that so that I don't release just one season a year because I started this podcast back in 2018. And um, I did do a little mini summer series, really, that was just me talking about all of my favorite black films, you know, which I love to do. Just, it was just a couple of them, but I'm gonna be a lot more consistent with that. And so really, like, just in conclusion, even though I'm not done with my face yet, I'm not gonna do too much with my eyes because I'm really not that good at it. And I really just like, I'm like, just, I'm not going nowhere too special. So I'm just gonna just do a little bit of some, you know? Cause I love red, I love red and I love pink. Pink is my favorite color of all time. So really, this is just me talking about all of the things I love. And I think like just more than anything, I want always, always to create space for black women in my work, in everything that I do in my life is, is, is about that. And so I thought, why not start with me, you know? With me, with one black woman. And that was really, that was really like one of my goals for 2020, was just to, you know, let other people say no to me and to take up more space as I feel like, you know, I do that enough. I do that a ton in my life. So I don't wanna, you know, say that I don't take up space, but I wanna take up even more space. I wanna push my boundaries even further. I really wanna see how much I can grow as an artist. So as an artist and as a creative and any other thing you could think of, I really like growth is, is it for me. It's so important to me. So that's why I'm starting this vlog. And also because again, I just love to hear myself talk. And really, it's just gonna be a lot of me talking about things that I love, you know, like music and movies, lots of music, lots of pop culture, because who doesn't love that? But also just about my life and about things that, you know, I'm growing, I'm going through because I'm growing still, always will be. I hope that is the goal to always be growing. Um, and I really just want to, you know, share that with people because I think it's so much more important for me and that is a part of why I started this website was because I felt like too many people write about it 
or vlog about it or talk about it after the fact, you know? Like, we don't hear enough about the growing pains or about people who are just, like, going through it right now, who are growing right now, who are learning and sharing as they go. I always want to be the kind of person who is learning and sharing as I go because, like, like somebody once said what, um, you know, if you knock down a door, make sure you leave a shoe behind for everybody coming behind you. You know what I mean? So like we're doing all of this as we go. We're learning as we go and doing all that fun shit as we go. And that's really just what I wanted to share. So I'm going to finish up my face. I can never really do this that well. I mean, like, I'm gonna get another brush. Maybe that was the wrong brush that I was using. But really, I just have never been good at, like, contouring my face. I'm gonna be honest. I just do a little sum, you know? See if it helps, you know? I wanna create some definition in this fat-ass face. I love my fat-ass face, but sometimes you're like, girl, could you be any less snatched? And we want to be more snatched, not less snatched. That's that's one of my 2020 goals. Always be more snatched. I really love this blush. It's like the same color as my eyeshadow, but it isn't. It's this old ColourPop palette. It's called Femme Rosa um, from Karuchi. Yeah, Karuchi. But it's really cute and I love it. And that lip gloss also that she released with that palette, I was kind of really into it. I used to hate on Karuchi a lot. I don't know why, because I was young and it was the internet and everybody did. But now I'm like, you go girl, like do your damn thing. You know what I mean? Just put on a little bit of a highlight, like not too much. Cause I'm already wearing this blush and it has like shimmer in it. So I probably shouldn't, but I can't help myself when it comes to highlight. I really love highlighters and I really love really love Fenty Beauty, you know? They just do things right over there, you know? They have it all together. And I really love them. Really love and respect Fenty Beauty and everything that they do. <clears throat> Wait, what was I looking for? <gasps> oh, shit. yes, it's right here. I'm gonna put on some mascara. I have to say, I just bought this mascara and I'm not that into it. I don't know. It's the Damn Girl mascara from Too Faced. And it hasn't impressed me that much. I'm gonna be honest. Smudge that a little bit, cause I love a little. I used to do a lot of eyeliner, but I don't have time for that today. Will that do? Okay. I'm gonna put on Okay. Now I'm gonna go and get my wig. And I'm back. And I'm just gonna throw my wig on like Doja Cat, you know? Cause again, I'm not going nowhere today. Okay. I like that enough. It's okay. <clears throat> Let's put on just a little bit of brown lip liner. I feel like there are very few things in this life that are better than like black girls, especially black girls with big lips, still lining their lips with brown liner. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so we're like basically done. So that's that's it, that's what this is. Um, this is Makeup Diaries with Mariah because really that's all I'm doing. I'm just venting to you about lots of things. Um, so if you like that, please like this video, please subscribe. Uh, we're gonna be dropping lots of different kinds of content, lots of different even kinds of beauty related content. This isn't even gonna be the extent of it. Um, it's gonna be really fun. You can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Mariah N. Woods. You can also follow Textured Air um, on Twitter and on Instagram and you cannot check us out at Textured Air 
textwithair.com. Please check us out at textwithair.com and see all the different kinds of content that we're making. And feel free to contact us. There's also a way on there to contact us if you have questions or, you know, always leave a comment on the things that we're doing. You know, let us know what kind of content it is that you, young black women, want to see. What kind of content you want the world to be like. We want us to be putting out to the world, you know, in representation of you and women like you and women like me. Um, and I'm really excited about this journey. So this is fun. Bye-bye. <laughs>